It's another beautiful day, isn't it? Look at it, it's glorious. I think it's even 10 degrees today. I think this is the, uh, the river gods shining fondly upon us as a reward for our recognition of the lost rivers, the buried streams. Which, of course, must mean one thing. You know what we have to do today, don't you? Go and find another lost river. So we're back up in Walthamstow, and today we're going looking for the Higham Hill Brook. The Higham Hill Brook, another kind of not just lost, but forgotten and ignored and unacknowledged lost river that worthy of its due reverence that we're going to give it today. And like so many of the lost rivers, it's a stream packed with stories flowing along its subterranean waters. Very, very excited about this walk today. Particularly, I'll tell you now, there's particularly one story here that I'm really excited to pick up. I've been meaning to go to this place for a couple of years now. Yes, well, I'm not going to say anymore. I'll just take you there. Let me just take you there. just turned out of Ho Street into Forest Road. On the old maps this is Clay Street before they gave it a more uh, picturesque name of Forest Road. I wonder if anyone still calls it Clay Street. It's a good name isn't it, Clay Street, very descriptive. So our quest to find the Higham Hill Brook starts here, at one of Walthamstow's most iconic locations. This is the William Morris Gallery. It was originally known as the Waterhouse, and it was built in the 18th century. But the Waterhouse is best known for being the childhood home of the kind of flouncy-haired, brilliantly bearded designer, William Morris. And that really is a very fine beard. I think all the hipsters in the world have been inspired by that beard. Morris only lived here for about eight years when he was a kid, I think from 1848 to... 1856 but it was obviously growing up on the edge of the forest was quite a formative kind of part of his of his life he uh, ended up designing he's best known now i'm sure but most of you will know him as the designer of these lovely sort of floral prints we saw some in the uh, opticians up on wood street of the week beautiful prints and they sell some really nice merchandise in there when it's open with that william morris print but then he he sort of converted to kind of this sort of utopian socialism and wrote this really kind of curious, uh, very early science fiction book called News From Nowhere, which I think was published in 1890, about someone who falls asleep on their way back from a political meeting and wakes up in this beautiful utopian future. He's an interesting character. He believed in the idea of art for all. That everyone should have access to beauty. Everyone that could afford his quite expensive <laughs> kind of wallpapers and, uh, and what do you call them, fabrics and stuff like that. But I suppose it was extending that idea of a beautiful interior design to the, to the middle classes. And before cosplay was even a thing, he was very fond of riding around the forest, dressed in male armour with a sword and a horse, pretending to be some sort of, I don't know, medieval knight in the 19th century. I mean, why not? <laughs> People do that today, don't they? So. But William Morris isn't the reason that we've come here today, actually. There's this bit of water here, this kind of pond that was obviously part of the grounds of the house. It's now Lloyd Park. And on the 1777 map of Essex, it shows a stream as originating here at the water house, running out of this, uh, of this little pond here. So I'm wondering if this is in fact the source of the Higham Hill Brook, even though later maps all show it as rising further north in Higham Hill, on Higham Hill Common. So actually I suppose this doesn't necessarily have to conflict with the old maps. You can see here is the watercourse in Lloyd Park that the 1777 map shows. A stream running in a straight line, which I guess would be down Winds Avenue. And quite a few people have said that there's a stream running down Winds Avenue. The later maps seem to suggest that it rises here, 
Just the other, you can see the allotments here are roughly where the Higham Hill Common used to be. Obviously, it was much bigger. And it seems to follow the course of Priory Court. So, I mean, it could be a little bit like the Fillybrook where there's two sources on the high ground. But we're going to walk over here anyway uh, to get a better look at that part of the, uh, the terrain. <laughs> We do have, look, what looks like it could be a channel leaving the lake there in that corner, which is consistent with the potential course of the river, if it does rise here, flowing down Winds Avenue over there. I think that could be the deity of the Higham Hill Brook there, that white cat. So after I posted the video last week of the Lost River rising in Upper Walthamstow, two people got in touch to say that there was a river running beneath the streets of Winds Avenue, which is here. And like I say, that does line up perfectly with the 1777 map and the watercourse there in Lloyd Park. So these look like uh, Warner houses. Find, you find these houses around Leighton and Walthamstow. These were very early attempts at a kind of, sort of like a social housing, although they were privately owned. They were good quality housing provided at low rents for working people. So I've walked along the Dagenham Brook from Leighton to Copper Mill Lane, Walthamstow. It's a great walk. I'll post the link to the video below. In fact, there's two videos. And um, that's a great walk. And, I suppose what it raises is the, the question of where does the Dagenham Brook rise? Because it kind of goes from the Lee back into the Lee in a funny kind of way. But actually there's a suggestion that the, the Higham Hill Brook flows into the Dagenham Brook and really the Higham Hill Brook, if you like, could be the source of the Dagenham Brook. Does that work? I'm sure there'd be people with opinions down below about that. And maybe that link was broken at some point but I hope that is where we're going to end up today, down in an industrial state off Black Horse Lane, looking for the Dagenham Brook, <laughs> where the Heim Hill Brook flows into the Dagenham Brook. This is one of those walks where it would have been easier to have done it in reverse, actually, from there back up the hill to the source. But um, this ends nearer to me. <laughs> <laughs> walking from Lake and Stone uh, to here. I'm going, I'm going along Elphistone Avenue now because I think we'll come back along Priory Court and see if we can find the river there where the document seems to suggest it rises, where all the other maps that I've got, well I've got two maps that show it really, they put it over here as well. So at the end of this road, let's see, let's see if we can find a source of a river, which is, a, you know, a sacred spot, a spring. A sacred spring, a holy well. It's not a holy well. Well, we can make it a holy well if you want. Walking along a buried river really does just open up the landscape in a way that other types of walks don't do in the same way. I never would have come down this street today if I wasn't doing this walk. I've never been down here before, and it's a really, really beautiful little street. Higham Hill. It's said to mean high home or high enclosure. And it's a really ancient manor. It's recorded in 1066 as being held by Howden, a freeman. And then it's passed through various hands. I guess he lost it to a Norman after that. It most likely would have existed before the conquest. That's a really beautiful building, isn't it? Higham Hill Library. What a gem. So this is the uh, 1894 map, and you can see the watercourse is marked in blue here, but it's, it's way to the north, not way to the north, but it's, you know, it's to the north of Lloyd Park, that's for sure. And it seems to follow here, it seems to follow the course of really uh, this, this road here, Priory Court, around the big housing development from the 1940s. So we'll follow Priory Court and see if we can see any traces of it. It gets a lot easier when we get down here, where there's a footbridge over um, Higham Hill Road. 
So here we're just going around the edge of Priory Court. It's the housing estate and it's also the name of this road. So we're looking for any indicators of a, of a course of a river, a kind of indentation in the landscape, a valley, a river valley. Priory Court was a really massive kind of housing scheme that was started just after the war. I think it started in 1946 and it took until the 1950s to complete. And they were considered kind of like luxury flats at the time. You know, a lot of people were desperate for housing after the war. They were living in overcrowded temporary accommodation. So the people that got moved into here, it was a really big deal. And you can see there's a big kind of um, regeneration going on now. Because I guess they've seen a bit of life. They've been around for a while. And it looks like it's extended as well. <laughs> I can't see anything at the moment. I know it gets a lot clearer later on. I won't say no, I'm pretty sure, because I remember walking along uh, Higham Hill Road and seeing that dip in the road and thinking, hang on a moment, something's going on here. The shape of this road is uncannily similar to the course of the stream on a couple of the old maps, the way it curves around and drops down towards the Dagenham Brook and the River Lee. And of course it also then comes round to Winds Avenue, so it would be consistent with... The idea of a buried river running beneath Winds Avenue. And if indeed the Heim Hillbrook is running beneath the road here, or running beneath the pavement or under that grass over there, that would explain why we're not really seeing anything in the shape of the land here, apart from the fact that we are gradually going downhill. We're about 75 feet up here on Heim Hill. So you see we're gradually dropping down. This really is a kind of winding, meandering road, isn't it? And we saw that when we did the River Fleet, the way that, that the course of the river would influence the shape of the roads that, that were built up on top of it. And this is, at the moment, from looking at the land, this is where I would put it. This is interesting now. As Priory Court runs into Winds Avenue, that's Winds Avenue running left to right across the frame there. And you can see the land rising up on the far side, suggesting that... This now does have the shape of a river valley. We've meandered down the hill and now we are in a kind of low point in the land here. That is really interesting. I was planning the walk and I was looking at the maps, contemporary and old. I did wonder whether the, um, the river ran through the estate along the edge of the allotments and then down Green Pond Road. That seems to be the obvious thing. Apart from when you look at the built environment, you think, well, they wouldn't have built a big estate on top of a river. But, how are you doing? Making a video. <laughs> Just uh, stop to chat to somebody who watches the videos. Always a lovely thing to do. Always lovely to meet people when I go out for a walk. It happens most times I go out for a walk now. Anyway, I was a little bit dubious about whether the Higham Hill Brook or that branch of the Higham Hill Brook could come along Winds Avenue. But coming here now, reading the land, it appears to be the shape of it. What we'll do though, is we'll go down to Higham Hill Road and we're going, well, I want to go around to Green Pond Road anyway. Great story in Green Pond Road, some of you will already know, I'm sure. In fact, quite a chunk of you, I imagine, will have visited Green Pond Road in its heyday. Look how steep it is up there, up Luton Road. I think we're definitely in a river valley here, whether it's running under this street or maybe behind these houses here. I can't be certain, but... So coming out to Higham Hill Road, it's pretty clear that this isn't actually the river here. You can see, look, looking down there, we're actually on the side of the hill. The low point in the land is right down there and it does line up with Green Pond Road, so actually it must run down beside the allotments, so we can walk that in the reverse direction. So this is pretty clearly the low point in the road here in Higham Hill Road. Steep rises to either side, meaning that the, uh, the stream must be running through here down Higham Street. So it means that the river must be running down through the estate somewhere. So I think we can loop back round up Green Pond Road, where I want to go anyway. I want to go up Green Pond Road because it's was once the home of one of the greatest non-league football teams in the land. 
Walthamstow Avenue. Walthamstow Avenue. What happened to Walthamstow Avenue? So I think here we're in Green Pond Road. Obviously there was a green pond here. So let's go and let's go and see what we can see. So I think we've got to go up Green Pond Road here, and the river is somewhere to our right. So we've got to see if we can see where it drops down. So this modern housing estate here sits on the site of what was once Green Pond Road Football Stadium. Quite a big ground with an illustrious history. Walthamstow Avenue were formed in 1900. And they were really, in the 1950s, 1960s, they were the top amateur team in the country. Walthamstow Avenue were so good in the 1950s and 1960s, they were even better than the mighty Wickham Wanderers at some point. Until my relative uh, Tony Bodger Horseman started playing for the Wanderers and knocked them off their perch. But there's some wonderful footage on YouTube, which I'll link to below, of uh, a 1953 cup tie here. It was rammed. There were thousands of people queuing up all the way down the road there. People waving their rattles. It was such a scene. They even played one of the matches for the 1948 London Olympics here, would you believe? I think it was uh, China versus Turkey, and Turkey won 2-1. So in 1988, the club basically ceased to exist. It merged with Leighton Stone Ilford, so obviously Leighton Stone FC, who were also another great Ishmael League team. They ceased to exist. And then they became another team, Dagenham Redbridge, and now they are Dagenham and Redbridge. So we lost all trace of Leightonstone FC and Walthamstow Avenue FC. It's kind of amazing, isn't it, when you think that Waltham Forest, the borough of Waltham Forest, once had two of the greatest non-league football teams at the same time. Leightonstone FC, who, were, who won the, uh, what do they call it, the Anglo-Italian Cup, and they won the Ishmael League and the FA Amateur Trophy, and Walthamstow Avenue, who achieved similar kind of uh, feats and now neither club exists I mean they've merged and they've become Dagenham and Redbridge and I think they play in the fifth tier of English football and in fact actually I think at one point Dagenham and Redbridge are in League One but it's such a tragedy that neither Leightonstone FC or Walthamstow Avenue have any presence in the borough anymore and they were the two greats of non-league football it's amazing isn't it and this was the ground I've just stood now on the pitch more or less or in one of the stands and also the shape of the land suggests that this must be where the brook runs, I would say. Probably through here. So it must have run under the pitch. Can that be right? Or would it have gone around the back of the stands? Which is an interesting parallel here. Because the Dagenham Brook still runs behind the back of the old Leighton FC ground. Another defunct, brilliant non-league football club. One of the oldest football clubs in London, in fact. And the Dagenham, you can still see the Dagenham Brook running behind the end of the pitch. So it's interesting that the Dagenham Brook links together two old football grounds of great local football clubs, which no longer exist, very sadly. So could it be that you can see a gap in the estate? Is there much of a gap in the estate? I bet you've got this big car park. It could be running through here. And then down through here, I suppose. Walthamstow Avenue had some great former players. It was James Lewis, who actually this bloke told me about. I met a guy in the street when I was doing my Dagenham Brook video, and he, um, he told me about Walthamstow Avenue. He played for them, which was amazing. And he told me about James Lewis, who played for... He said he played for England, but I think actually when looking it up, he seems to have played for the England amateur side a number of times. But he also played for Great Britain in the Olympics, in three Olympics for the Great Britain Olympic football team, which is amazing, isn't it? Uh, and then he left... Um, Walthamstow Avenue and went to play for Chelsea. He had three stints at Walthamstow Avenue. My, my, my favourite uh, favorite ex-player is a guy called, I think it was called Colin Friday in the 70s. And the Soupy Furry Animals wrote a song about him called The Man Don't Give a Rude Word That Would Get Me Demonetised. Um, and he was known for his hard-drinking, womanising, gambling ways. Famous for kicking Mark Lawrenson in the face in the 1970s. So this seems to line up with uh, Higham Street on the other side. If we follow the line there, that garage down there, the white garage, I'll put an arrow in there. On the other side of that is Higham Street. So this would indicate where, this must be where the river's flowing. So here we have Higham Hill Common allotments. The allotments have been cultivated here since 1850, since an Enclosure Act. And they've been growing stuff here ever since then. 
course, before the enclosure of 1850, Higham Hill Common would have been much, much bigger. I think Higham Hill Recreation Ground is partly built on, uh, on the site of the common. This is one of the biggest allotment sites in London. Yeah, I think we're looking down there into the river valley from up here on Green Pond Road. So I must have asked, I don't know, three people now either in the estate there and up at the allotments if they knew of a buried river, not one person. Interesting, and, and actually the lady who was a, an allotment holder, she says she doesn't know of any water actually rising on or around the allotment. But she did say it was built on the site of a pond, hence Green Pond Road. So I can locate that on the map. Anyway, we'll go back to Higham Hill Road where we can see, we can see where the river is. And then we're gonna carry on towards the Dagenham Brook and the Sacred River Lee. I did make a video about Higham Hill. I don't know, was it three, four years ago? And I called it at the time, I called it um, the secret suburb because a lot of people didn't really know <laughs> much about Higham Hill, or even like people in the area didn't really know it. But Higham Hill was actually quite an important area uh, from an industrial perspective. I think um, Andrex Lou Roll was, was made here. I think, it was, I think it was developed here. I think it was a very new thing when they developed Andrex Lou Roll. And there was, it was very important in the print industry. I think there were a few um, typefaces that were actually developed in Higham Hill. It's not through here. You can see all this new housing. I think a lot of this was built on old industrial areas. You see them on the map. There's a number of, of interesting factories that were in this area. Like I say, it's kind of like this the other side of Walthamstow Town Hall. It kind of gets a little bit forgotten and neglected. A bit like its little brook, which I think is beneath this road. So I'd say the stream is running through Chamberlain Place here. Which is a bit of a cul-de-sac. Let's go and have a look anyway. See the lie of the land. Maybe we could hear some water. Aye, aye, what have we got here? And I think that's the route it takes through there. I don't know if this is it. I doubt it. It's not deep enough. Yeah, I think it's running through this car park and then down the backs of those houses there. See that would work. You can see there's a little bit of the Dagenham Brook there where it turns inland away from the Lee. That I think is the confluence with the Higham Hill Brook. And it's just downhill from there. I love these old metal bollards here. They're a remnant of something of the past, aren't they? So we're going to go down Sutherland Road here, down towards the industrial zone along the Lee Valley. That's where I think the brook is running, down there behind this factory. And behind those houses, this is the kind of landscape you see along the course of buried rivers. It's quite a beautiful old industrial unit, isn't it? The Relcon Works. I wonder what they used to make there. Look at this Art Deco beauty here. Sutherland House. It's like a kind of like a Dutch cottage, doesn't it? Like a chalet. Gotta go on a long loop through this industrial estate. Well, I say an industrial estate. Basically a former industrial estate, isn't it? Because on the left here you see the industrial buildings, little light industrial buildings, and on the right you see all the new build apartments, which is it's an indicator of what's going on in the area at the moment. Something really particular about the Lee Valley Industrial Belt. It's got a real feel to it. 
by local honey there, you see, it's part of the field to it. There you go, got Black Horse Workshop here, so it's kind of a new initiative, I think. Lots of uh, light industry going on in there, good to see. So there's probably a bit of artists and coffee going down there as well. So I think finding the low point in Black Horse Lane here is going to be relatively straightforward. I can see it from the top of the hill here. Somewhere down there, in that low point in the land, is our buried river, the Higham Hill Brook. This is a fairly stunning building here, isn't it? Black Horse Lane. Ateliers, which I think it's just uh, artist studios, aren't they? It doesn't matter what the river is, buried above ground, as you get towards the end of a river walk, you get this real tangible sense of excitement. It's a real almost like you get like an adrenaline rush. It's like the conclusion to a hunt. So that little trace of the Dagenham Brook that we see above ground, where it just turns in this direction is just basically between the gap between these industrial buildings down there on the River Lee. So that means that must be where the, the Higham Hill Brook is running there through this gap between the buildings and directly across the road here we have this very brightly coloured hoarding. So the brook must be running through there. I wonder if we're, there'd be something on the plans or some aerial photographs. Wouldn't it be amazing? So this is great. In the planning documents for Black Horse Yard, the, the building development there behind the hoardings, here it says, Culvert. The existing culvert is to be renewed across the central site and the landscape will feature areas where the culvert will be opened to allow views and access to the water. Historically, the culvert was known as the Higham Hill Brook. As it exits the culvert by Maynard Reservoir, it is known as Dagenham Brook. Wonderful, so it's going to be de-culverted, which will uh, contribute greatly to the sense of place, linking to the site's history and natural systems. Uh, this process is known as uh, daylighting. So we're going to have to go around these industrial buildings here to get to the other side to see if we see any trace of the river in the landscape near its journey's end. It's a real shame I'm doing this walk during lockdown, because if not... I would now turn this into a walk along the Walthamstow Beer Mile, which runs along Black Horse Lane. There's a number of breweries and tap rooms along here. And it looks like a, a fine day out, if I may say so. I think we'll see one down here, near the Higham Hillbrook. Maybe it's making their beer from the waters of the Higham Hillbrook. I think it's Truman's Social, or Truman's like, it's like a tap room. I don't know if they brew beer there. beer over there. This is the back of the Truman Social. Wow. I can, I can smell it. I mean, it is a Friday and by the time I get home to Leightonstone I will have done a decent walk so I think I deserve a couple of pints, don't I? I need to find, I'm going to find some beer in this industrial state. After I found the river, the river's the priority then the beer. So that's really interesting the Truman's chimney there which i think is uh, harking back to the truman's brewery in brick lane it's like a little mock-up of it isn't it the famous truman's brewery in brick lane this could be the course of the river running through here so basically really easy to make a libation a votive offering a kind of putting a, making a gift of alcohol to the river god if you came down here just go to the truman's brewery spill a bit of your pint on the ground remember that if ever you come down here the same truman social that's what you got to do so I think it's down here through the cash and carry. I wonder if, if I wander down there, they'd probably kick me out, wouldn't they? But there it is. I've come through this car park here, the cash and carry, and there is the is the brook in that culvert. We can't really see it, can we? If we were on the other side, we'd be able to see it. 
Well, that is fantastic. <laughs> That's a brilliant conclusion to see that concrete culvert there. That, I think, then is, is the beginning of the Dagenham Brook. And I've done that Dagenham Brook walk, I don't know how many times, um, at least 10 times, I think, or maybe slightly less than 10 times. But I had no idea you could see it this far up. And that is where the Higham Hill Brook runs into the Dagenham Brook. What an amazing conclusion to this walk. Oh, definitely want to celebrate now with some fresh beer from a brewery. Right, that's my next quest. I really love this quote, actually, from um, a book called uh, Thrones and Dominations, a novel by Dorothy L. Sayers and Jill Patton Walsh. And one of the characters in it says about buried rivers, you can bury them deep under, sir. You can bind them in tunnels. But in the end, where a river has been, a river will always be. I love that. Where a river has been, a river will always be. That's the perfect sentiment to end this walk on. I think I might have found my beer here. Look at that, they've got tons of it. Sure you can spare a couple of pints. This is signature brew. In I go. Scored a couple of cans of delicious signature brew IPA. Roadie and backstage IPA, fresh from the brewery. I shall go home and toast the Higham Hill Brook with these tonight. Well, well, thank you so much for joining me on another fantastic Lost River Walk, a buried river, secret underground stream walk. You're great company. I think you're bringing me a lot of luck on these walks. If I was just doing this on my own and not um, filming it, I don't think I'd find anywhere near as much as I do when you come along with me. So thank you so much. Thank you also so much to my wonderful supporters on Patreon, the Radical Ramblers and the Fellow Travellers. A number of you have just recently signed up, which is fantastic. Thank you so much. And also thank you so much to all the people that have subscribed recently. I've had like 5,000 subscribers in the last month. That's amazing. Thank you so much. This is brilliant. Where will we go next? I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. And this time around, I really, I have no idea where it will be next time so any suggestions pop them in the comments and uh, maybe that'll be where I'll be next time take care stay safe have a great week <laughs>